Hi everyone, by the end of this video, you're going to be able to access the Nervos Godwalkin blockchain L2 using Unity plus Playmaker. And by doing it in this method, you're gonna be able to do it in a no script method or a visual scripting method. So this is a, essentially what we call no code or low code. And if you don't know what that is, just keep watching and after a few minutes, you will indeed know. So the first thing you need to do is in fact, actually use this um, tool here in Unity called Playmaker. It is $65 and this is the only thing you need to purchase to go along with this process. However, it's completely worth the, you know, the price if you wanna go with the low to no code uh, method of working within the Unity game engine to access the uh, Nervos Godwalken L2 blockchain. That's quite a mouthful. So go ahead and um, buy this on the Unity Asset Store and click Open in Unity, and it's going to open up in Unity for you. Of course, make sure that you have Unity installed. Now, I've already gone through that entire process, so I don't need to do it here on screen, which is actually going to take a while. Now, once that's done, you are going to be able to go Unity Playmaker Editor, and it's going to have a editor window like this. And I've gone ahead and docked it along the bottom. Now we can choose a game object and the scene. I can create a new one and I'll just call this um, Playmaker Object. You can call it whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, and there we go. From here, we want to add a Playmaker Object onto it so we can start our, our visual scripting. Or it says right click to add FSM. FSM here stands for Finite State Machine. So I'm going to right click add FSM and you can see that it's automatically added here onto the game object which we have selected right there and it will also add this Playmaker GUI most likely to your scene to capture clicks and other things that are going on. Okay. You can next click lock to lock it into place and we have the first state here. I'm also going to choose the action browser button down here the first time to set this up and this will be you know popped off somewhere here and I'm just going to dock it here on this side. So now I have all of my Playmaker actions ready and my state ready. And just to show you how this works, in the very first state, I'm going to call this whatever I want. So this is just like naming scripts. You can give it any name that makes your heart happy. So I could just call this my wait state, for example. Push enter and I can give it you know, any kind of description I want. Right, and it, it's just going to go in there. Hopefully you can spell better than me. Now on the state we can add a action to this and there's all kinds of pre-made actions here that we can use that we don't need to program. And the one that I want, I'm just going to search it for the sake of time, is called wait. I can double click this and it's going to go into this first state. Now how long do I want it to wait? I don't know, maybe I want it to wait three seconds. And when it's done waiting, I want it to have a finish event. I want something to happen after this. So I could use some of these custom events, but I'm just going to create a new event and call wait finished. Now, again, the name of the event um, really doesn't matter what you call it. You can call it anything you want. It's just to help you remember the event and what it is. Now it says here, event not used by the state or any global transition. So what this means is even though I have an event, it's not actually attached to the state. So I can just click this and it will do it automatically for me. So we have the name of the state here, wait state, and then we have a finished event. And in this case, there's only one possible finished event. You know, certain actions could have lots of different events depending on the outcome of the action. But for this one, it just has one. Now I'm going to right click over here and add another state and connect these together. So when this finishes, it will flow into the next state. And in this state, I'm going to do something blockchain related. So let's take a look at our, our possible actions here. And with this, we are using, and I, I totally forgot to mention this, we are using the Web3 Unity is what it's called, but this is a chain safe SDK and this is available on GitHub and we'll take a look at GitHub in a minute but first we're just going to do this this first um, 
just to show you sort of what's up and then we'll we'll backtrack a little bit so if you're following along step by step there won't be um chain safe in here because we haven't downloaded it yet but i just want to show you what we're doing first and then sort of back up to that so i'm using the chain safe sdk and there's a bunch of actions in here already created and we will go ahead and well i will go ahead and create some more and keep uploading them but for now these are where we are to start and you can see actually all of these functions pretty much are all read functions. Now reading from the blockchain is essentially free. There is no gas fee involved. There's nothing you need to pay. You don't need to sign in with a wallet or anything like this. So reading from the blockchain is a really good place to start because you don't need, there's no costs involved. So why don't we pick something fairly easy? So we are going to choose to um, for example, let's read the total supply of an ERC-20. So an ERC-20 is a token, and we can just double click here, and it will add it onto this. So why don't we give this a name? I just want to call read token, and enter will change. And that's going to request a couple of things from us to fill out here. And if you don't know what to fill out here, then it will be um, difficult. So this is something that I will leave for you in the comments of this video. So you can just copy and paste this in. And what we're going to need is the chain, the name of the chain, the network, a contract, and an RPC. And you might not know what this is, but we'll, we'll go over that um, carefully here. So the chain here is, um, let me think off the top of my head here. I believe the chain is, it's going to be um, Godwoken, and this might change, so I'll, I'll leave it in the comments. And then I think it's testnet uh, one point. We'll try it like this. And again, as far as the contract goes, we'll look at that in a second. Now, if ChainSafe SDK supports out of the box the chain and the network you're using. All you need to put in is the chain and the network. And there's a list of that on the ChainSafe SDK documentation site. But because Godwoken hasn't officially been added yet or it's in the process, we actually have to add an, an R RPC. Um, so this is essentially an endpoint to connect to the blockchain that in our case is publicly available for people to use. And I've actually saved it up here already, so I can just copy and paste it. And okay, so we have chain, yep, that's good. Okay, so network was incorrect. Let me copy and paste that in. Okay, and we can copy this RPC. We don't wanna type it all in, it's quite long. Okay, now we need to get the address of the contract. So if I, I hover over here, it says smart contract, address so which token specifically are we looking at well when smart contracts are deployed onto the blockchain they live at a certain address or they can be found at a certain address so that we can access the information of it otherwise we might have say for example two smart contracts with the same code but they're actually different um, so they need not names but essentially addresses And let's take a look here. So if we go over to startwithnervos.com, and this is our uh, community developer portal, which is you know still undergoing some changes, but we go launch on Godwoken because this is what we're looking at, and we scroll down. We can in fact find. Okay, so here's the RPC. That's the RPC URL, you can see it right there. We can copy and paste it, but let's go to the training guide and scroll down. Let's see, I think there is, um, let's here choose token. So here's a bunch of different tokens and you can see it has the, the address here. This is what the address is. But I think if we go to project templates, Oh my, this has got really updated with lots of cool stuff here. Okay, so here, let's look at this one. So a claimable testnet ERC20 token. So this is we want, a testnet token that we can, it's ERC20. And so we're just gonna check the balance of this token to see how much of this has been minted. So we'll just grab the address here, copy this, 
go back to Unity, and now we can paste this in here in the contract address. Now, lastly, we need a success event or a fail event because we want it to go maybe to here for something good to happen. If, if something successful has happened or if there's a failure, we want the game to, to manage that somehow. So here is where we have the importance of two events and not just one. So I'm going to create a new event for this, and I can call it um, success. And I'll click to automatically add it. Fail. I'll click this, it will automatically add as well. <laughs> I had both a train go by and a cat jump on my lap. Okay, success event, fail event, and we, we both have these added here. Now we want to save this balance or this total supply and we need to save it into a variable. So let's, currently there's no variable here. So let's go and create a new variable and call this uh, total supply. And now we have the chain network contract, RPC, success fail event, total supply. And we can make sure that we have the debug clicked here so that this information shows up right here as it happens. Okay, so we'll say success goes here, fail goes here. All we need to do now is click play and see what happens. Okay, so it's waiting for three seconds. It's doing the function and then it says success. So let's check this, this action here. And we can see it's given us a total supply. It's a ridiculously large number, but there you go. That's the, the total supply of this. So we can unclick play. And why don't we quickly grab another contract address and just try it to see. Um, I believe these are also on testnet. Guess we're gonna find out. You can just go ahead and paste that in there and click play again. So it's waiting for three seconds. You can see it's running here. It's gone into the read token state, success. So here's the total balance of this contract as well. So for any ERC20 token contract here that's on testnet, we can go ahead and just plug in the address of the contract and, and read it. And so let's just take a quick look at the actions that are currently available. And if you click on them, it will give you uh, a very brief description of what they do. Um, so in this one, we can get the total ERC-20 token balance by account. So we need to pass it not only the contract, but the account. So for example, maybe my account, your account, could be our player's account. This one shows us how many decibel points there are on this, this contract. This will give us the name of the token. This will give us the symbol of the token. We have the total supply. Now these ones are for ERC-721, so this is NFTs. This will give us all of the 721 tokens from a specific account. Um, we have the balance of tokens by account, the owner of a specific NFT, it will tell us the uh, account address. This one will pass us back the URI or essentially the metadata address for an NFT. Let's see here, this one um, gives us the connected wallet address from the player press. So this is for when a player signs in using their wallet, then it will save the address here, which is essentially public information. Then let's see, we can read the balance of the native token. So this will tell us how many uh, CKBs, for example, is on Godwoken. Read the current block number. So this will tell us the current block number of the blockchain on testnet. In this case, we can read the nonce, we can read a transaction status, and we can verify a signed message. So there's quite a few more um, possible uh, Playmaker actions here to create for Chainsafe, and this is their documentation here. So in no way is this yet um, complete, but it's it's like along the process here. You can see here like such as get block number, balance, uh, verify. So we saw all these transaction status, nonce. Um, this is just a helper function. And you can see we have these ERC721s like getting the balance, the owner, um, the URI, all 
the RC721. So we've got quite a few actually. However, what you may notice is most of these are all read, not write functions. And so we'll get into the write functions a little bit into in another video. But I just first wanted to show you how to use the read function and get started in using this um, along with uh, the Nervos Godwalken blockchain. Okay, so if you've made it this far, I'm just going to show you the GitHub repos as well to install Chainsafe and um, the actions here. And probably the best way to find these is just um, Google it um, if there's not a direct link for you. But you can see we're in the Chainsafe uh, repository, and then it's called web3.unity. And you can basically just go ahead, and I would suggest this is the easiest way to do it, is to download the web3.unity uh, package, double-click it, it will open up in Unity for you. So that's great. Um, probably don't do the beta, stick with the main releases if you're not uh, super familiar with this process. The other thing is my actions here, and you can find them at uh, Eric Vanderwall backslash, and then you'll find them under chain safe SDK dash playmaker. And in this case, you want to go to the code tab and get a zip. Don't try and download them one by one. You will get an error, uh, an encoding error typically with Unity. Um, so just grab the whole thing, download it as a zip, unzip it, drag it, and drop it into your Unity project and Unity will automatically recognize it, that it's a Playmaker-related thing, and start reading it. So you can see it right here. This is exactly what this is. So that's how you go ahead and get started with this. So again, just to reiterate, reiterate one more time, you want to install Unity, you want to install and buy the Playmaker package, then you want to install the Chainsafe SDK, and lastly, you can bring in these custom actions that have been made to integrate the two together. So in the next video, we're going to talk about getting your wallet set up and possibly doing some of the read fun or sorry, write functions to the blockchain. But again, I just wanted to get everyone started here uh, up and quick.